Did you know that working out may increase neurochemicals that can help our brain function? Exercising can help us with our cognitive abilities and our mental health. I kind of love this. Of all of the symptoms of MS, losing my cognitive abilities is one of the ones that I'm most fearful of. Losing who I am. An article came across my feed recently that highlighted the multiple benefits of exercise and how different kinds of exercise can have different effects on us and our brains. A regular exercise is one of the four pillars that I've used to live well with my MS for the past 18 years. The other three are diet, sleep, and kindness in the forms of compassion and mindfulness. I have a confession though. Since the pandemic, I've kind of lost my stride with exercise. I'm still exercising, but I haven't been as consistent. I've also gone through menopause, and I feel like I've lost some muscle mass too, which is making exercise harder. I'm no longer a spring chicken. Do any of you feel like you've lost your stride with exercise? Or are you finding it harder to be consistent? I'll let me know in the comments below. This video is going to be a bit different as it doesn't just pertain to those with MS or chronic illness. It's for everyone with a brain. So if you find it helpful, please do me the favor of sharing it with others. Thanks. The article shared that Dr. Jennifer Heise, a neuroscientist, has found multiple benefits of exercise for our brain. Exercise can help our brain in diverse and multiple ways. She says one key thing that exercise increases is brain-derived neurotropic factor, BDNF. This acts like a fertilizer to grow new brain cells and help our existing brain cells to function optimally. New brain cells and helping existing brain cells? Yes, please. Dr. Heise wrote a book called Move the Body, Heal the Mind that includes research about how exercise can help with anxiety, depression, dementia, improve focus, creativity, and sleep. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to read this book and do a video review of it. This article went on to say that 70% of those with neurodegenerative disorders are women, and women also have higher rates of mental illness and other diseases. She explains that women tend to be more susceptible to stress-induced mental illnesses, such as anxiety and depression, and research has shown that exercise protects against stress-induced depression and anxiety in both men and women. The studies also demonstrate that women tend to benefit more from some of the cognitive benefits of exercise. This may be related to the sex differences in the production of BDNF to exercise. This fascinates me because overwhelmingly studies have been done on males. Animal studies are done on male mice and rats and other animals, and many human studies have historically been done on men. Only recently are we seeing more balanced research, and they're finding that women are different from men. Go figure. So this article prompted me to look further into the research, and I found a meta-analysis that included 54 randomized control trials with 6,277 participants that was published in December of last year that looked at how exercise affects our brain. It used the FITT-VP principle as reference, which is defined as exercise frequency, how often, intensity, difficulty, time, duration of each bout of exercise, type of exercise, volume, total amount of exercise per intervention, and progression, change in difficulty in an exercise program over intervention time. So it looked at a lot of variables and they did statistical analysis and adjusted for bias. They found multiple areas where exercise can help our brains. Global cognition, executive function, and memory. Let's start with global cognition. Global cognition is an umbrella term that refers to various areas of cognitive performance. It refers to our overall mental status and ability to perform everyday activities. The review found that all types of exercise helped with cognition, but that aerobic exercise had more significant interaction effect with global cognition than the other types of exercise. That's cool. How much aerobic exercise do we need? They found that benefits were greatest for moderate intensity exercise performed three to four times per week, 
with bout durations of 45 to 60 minutes for a total of three to six months. Okay, so we need to do this at least three times a week for at least 45 minutes and could see improvements in three months. Excellent. But what exactly is aerobic exercise? Aerobic literally means with oxygen. So any exercise that increases our oxygen intake could be considered aerobic. Sometimes you may hear it referred to as cardio workouts or cardiovascular exercise because our heart rates go up. Some examples of aerobic exercise that we can do are walking, jogging, running, hiking, bicycling, swimming, jumping rope, dancing, stair climbing, or rowing. If we have limited mobility, we can still get our heart rates up with seated exercises. There are several excellent videos out there that can help from Dr. Gretchen Holly, the MS Gym, and MS Workouts, and I will link them below. Next is executive function. Executive function involves higher cognitive processes such as conflict management, inhibitory control, and decision making. According to the Cleveland Clinic, it refers to skills that we use to manage everyday tasks like making plans, solving problems, and adapting to new situations. The three main skills are working memory, cognitive flexibility, and inhibition control. The meta-analysis showed that both resistance and aerobic exercise were significantly associated with enhanced executive function, but that resistance exercise appeared to be the most effective way to improve executive function. Some examples of resistance training are squats, push-ups, lunges, bicep curls, dumbbell lifts, glute bridges, resistant band exercises, bent over rows, weight machine exercises, planks, kettlebell swings, bench presses, and bodyweight exercises like chin-ups. We don't need as much resistance training as aerobic exercise to see benefits. The results showed that low exercise frequency, one to two times per week for three to six months of moderate intervention length were associated with the largest executive function benefits. Finally, memory. Memory refers to the process of acquiring and storing information in the brain. Their results showed that mind-body exercise had the largest positive benefit on memory. Some examples of mind-body exercise are yoga, tai chi, qigong, and zumba. How much? And their results indicated a moderate exercise frequency of 45 to 60 minutes per week for a total intervention of three to six months may benefit memory. They speculate that these types of exercises help with memory because they require us to remember a series of complex movements and to move the trunk of our bodies and all four limbs. The challenge of remembering the patterns and sequences of these types of exercises helps us to enhance our memory. Since my first relapse in 2006, exercise has been an important part of managing my symptoms, regaining my strength and flexibility, and possibly preventing progression. Taking exquisite care of myself is key to my health and well-being. I'm rededicating myself to more regular, scheduled, and purposeful exercise. I will try to get the recommended aerobic, resistance training, and mind-body exercise each week to protect my beautiful brain and help it to be healthier. The questions of the day are, what do you do for exercise? And will you change your exercise habits after seeing what the research shows? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for joining me today. To help support this channel and to help it to reach more people, please share this video, like, and subscribe. To see more on living well, watch these videos next. Until next time, be well.